What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today, um, we're going to focus around the headliners, mostly, um, throughout, periodically throughout the, uh, the video. First things first, apologies for the lighting, I've, the blinds man has been, not, he's not blind, he's put the blinds on. Um, the problem with this window that I have right here is it's really high, it's only like an inch off the ceiling, so if I put blinds up, can't open the windows. Um, so they're having to do a little bit of extra structural work and put the blind box thing in the ceiling, if you get me. Uh, so it, it's going to take a little while. Normally I record after like 4pm or so. But as you guys that were here yesterday would know, I've been like fixing my sleep pattern a little bit in that. And so it's the afternoon right now and I'm recording, which means you've got to deal with the light probably just for like a couple more days. <sighs> and that's it. Um... Anyway, welcome guys to the video. Thank you for being here. Drop a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. Let's try and smash one... Mi no, let's, let's set a reasonable, unreasonable target. Let's say 20,000 likes. It's reasonable because we get about 100,000 views, so I only need one in every five of you to like the video, but it's relatively unreasonable because we usually get about 3,000 likes. So let's go for 20,000. That would be amazing. <sighs> comments. Lots of comments. Um... First of all, I just want to give my, uh, my, my, my experience and my feedback and my opinion a little bit here on um, some of the gameplay now. Um, obviously, over the last couple of days, I've been experimenting a little bit with ways of scoring. As you guys know, I find crossing to be a very f effective method of scoring. However, uh, low-driven finesses are also very effective. You'll see a few of those in today's video. And there's also a little, um, a little like... Volleys are really effective. I, like I've seen a few, a few guys have like sent me clips and stuff. Uh, a few of the pro players and stuff of you know flicking the ball up to a player just outside the box and then smashing it home with a volley. Sometimes a bicycle kick. I'm struggling to understand the, the mechanics on that one. I've I've not been successful with it and I've tried multiple times. Uh, so I I need to either work a little bit harder to really understand how that one works or it's just not kind of for me. Interestingly, I was watching Bateson play earlier. He was streaming and uh, he was playing champs and he does lots of chip through balls, even in areas where it's like I would never have imagined to do a chip through ball there. He'd just do a chip through ball, chip through ball, chip through ball, bang it. And I'm like, God damn, that was like, that was crazy. But hey, if it works, you know, it works. Um, but yeah, in general, guys, I, like I'm not really struggling to score. You'll see my games. I'm scoring plenty of goals still. Uh, some from crosses, some not from crosses, some really nice build up play. I'm conceding far less goals. I just find this game to be very boring right now. Um, and, and that is a bit of an issue for me because this this channel specifically, my main channel not really at all, but this channel specifically relies so heavily on playing the game and, and having gameplay that if I can't find a way to enjoy it, um, I don't know what we're going to do with this series for the rest of the year. But we're, I'm going to give it some time before I come to an ultimate conclusion. You know, weeks, maybe even months. Uh, maybe until the end of the game. Um, but uh, anyway, comments. Uh, Teferosius HD says, uh, I played against someone today who literally only crossed with Bale and CR7 in the box. I won 1-0 and he had no shots on target. Thanks, Nep. I don't know if he's being a little bit... Um, because, like, I don't know if he's, like, kind of, like, mocking a lot of people that are mocking me or if he's genuinely believes that uh, that's to my end. But what I would say, because there's a lot of this on Reddit... A lot of Reddit think that I should now go 30-0 and 0 because I can cross the ball and score from it. A lot of Reddit uh, are saying that there is no crossing meta. And hey, if you don't want to play like that, that's fine. You don't have to cross the ball. You know, it, and, it's, and it, also, it's not as simple as just pressing cross. There are very specific things that you need to do in order to make the crosses work. There's a very specific way you need your team set up to make the crosses work. However, what I would say to something like this, uh, Teferosius D., is that you would have also had games pre-patch where somebody would have tried finesse shot after finesse shot against you and they wouldn't have scored and you would have won the game. Knowing, uh, let's not say a new overpowered scoring technique, but knowing any overpowering scoring technique doesn't inherently render you the winner of the game because what if two people know the same technique? Or what if one person knows how to defend against a technique? Or what if the person that's trying to use a technique doesn't understand how to use it properly? Like, it, it's a lot deeper than, oh, you know how to score from crosses? You should go 30-0. You know. That's just not how the game, you know, that's not how the game works. However, as I say, I don't know if he's being 
facetious. Uh, I don't know if he's mocking the mockers or, or you know, if he's just going for a bang comment. But, um, yeah, I, I do want to just say that, uh, you know, you, like, you, you're going to face people that try and cross all game and are unsuccessful in the same vein that you would have faced people that would have tried to finesse shot all game and were unsuccessful in the same vein now that you will, fight, you will face people that sit on drop back and just try and hit you on the counter all game and they will be unsuccessful. You will also face people that do those things that will be successful. At the end of the day, I don't think that this patch is as different as the game feels generally speaking right now. I don't think this patch is actually going to really drastically change most of the user base's finishes. If you if you were getting 15 wins on average before, I think you'll still get 15 wins on average. If you were getting 20 wins on average before, I think you'll still get 20 wins on average. There will be the odd anomaly that starts exceeding far beyond what they were doing normally and the odd anomaly that will start like dropping massively. I've seen a few threads on Reddit of a guy saying I've gone down like a thousand skill rating since I've um since this patch and stuff like that there are people that will completely struggle because of these changes and there are people that will absolutely soar and fly because of these changes but generally speaking most people will just be where they're at this isn't going to make that much of a change um the next comment is from luke alloway he says i opened loads of packs and got nothing well as you can see here i've opened a few uh we did get jerome boateng there um we did get Felipe Luis, but yeah, I've I've spent some resources on this off like after the what I've got for this video, and I didn't get anything. I did a video yesterday. I opened 25 of them, and I only got I think one walkout's worth, uh, a few 83s and 84s, but only one 86 rated. I haven't got any of these special cards or anything like that. I just generally speaking haven't had much luck with these, and th these are weird ones because on the one hand they are relatively cheap i don't want to say they're cheap cheap but there is about seven thousand coins you know especially if you do an open bid about seven thousand coins but you only get one player if you were doing the um you know the league specific upgrade packs that was like eight or nine thousand coins for 12 players including three rares now, of course, it's not a player pick pack, so you get that added benefit. Um, and then also the 82 plus packs where you got two players. Again, that was like a 7,000 coin, 8,000 coin pack where you got two players. And again, yeah, you couldn't pick them. So although it's a pretty cool, um, although it's, it's a pretty cool uh, pack, I love the fact it's repeatable. I don't know how many resources I personally want to waste on it because... I don't think that as an untradeable option there, I don't think it's worth it necessarily. Obviously, those of you that have hit good cards out of those, it's worth it. For me, I'm going to spam them anyway because I make content out of it. But for you guys at home thinking, oh, I've got 50,000 coins. Is it worth me you know, investing this 50,000 coins, getting probably a total of about eight, maybe nine packs? Is it going to be worth it? The answer realistically is going to be no. You probably won't get a headliner. You probably won't get a top end card. You probably won't get an inform or anything like that. Um, and then, of course, if you did get uh, a headliner, they are untradeable. So if you've got one that doesn't fit your team, you've essentially just put a card on your bench or in your reserves. Um, and that's kind of pointless, isn't it? In, again, in my opinion, there, there are some good cards here. Um, some of them way more expensive than I thought. Some of them way cheaper than I uh, had anticipated as well. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get more to that in a little minute. Jake says, uh, I think a lot of YouTubers have missed the point that they chose players that played well this season so that those cards have a better chance of being upgraded than the ones to watch that never get upgraded. Love the vids, bro. Keep up the good work. Well, actually, what they've done, seemingly, is they've taken one player from every team of the week so far except for team of the week four apparently doesn't have a player and in that team of the week was hulk so maybe even by time you're watching this video or maybe tomorrow or whatever i feel like we're gonna get a hulk sbc um for one of these cards which would be amazing but yeah they've taken one player from each team of the week and in terms of them getting upgraded or not getting upgraded i just want to go to uh um, another comment. So jean francois dubay he says hey now do you know if these cards will upgrade with team of the season and the answer to that is no, they won't. The way that they will upgrade is uh, a foot 19 headliner item will upgrade when they earn a qualifying performance based in form. Team of the week until the end of the 2018-2019 season. Man of the match, hero, record breaker and team of the tournament selection. 
How long will a Foot19 headliner player take to get updated in game? It says a few hours. What happens if their inform is a different position? The inform will just be a different position to the headliner. Um, and so basically, they won't. Like, I don't understand in some regards because some of them have been upgraded based off of their most recent Futmus card. I think Rashford is the example of that, unless he did. did oh, no, he got an inform, didn't he? Yeah. Um, so what I don't like about it is I don't like the fact that they don't follow SBC upgrades too. The reason why I don't like that is because now it is, again, it is based on performance. And yes, a lot of these guys are performing very well. But let's take Werner, for example. Werner, his most recent upgrade, his 87 card, was Team of the Week 12. That was eight weeks ago. That's now two full months without him getting an upgrade. Um, if we take, for example, Marquinhos... I don't even remember when his uh, inform was. His 86 inform was team of the week seven. So you're looking at three months ago, 12 weeks ago. We're at team of the week 20 now. So 13 weeks ago was Marquinhos' upgrade. And they've given him a live item. And the reason why that, for me, is is like, although I know, um, you know, what, uh, what the guy with the first comment said in the sense of, you know, they picked players that are playing well and stuff. Okay, maybe they have, but they've still picked players that could potentially not get an upgrade for the rest of the season. And the fact that in the Premier League, there's only like 13 or 14 games left. In most leagues, there's only, you know, around 10 to 15 games left. Yeah, you've got team of the tournaments. Yeah, you've got man of the matches, cup competitions, European competitions that could also influence these guys. But you have to rely on the actual specific player playing well in the game, not the team. And, and so for me personally, that, that's a little bit boring. Um, I wish that it was based like the road to the final cards. I wish this was based on team performance. And so every time, you know, if EA can set certain stipulations, so every time the team advances in a round in the cup, they get an upgrade. Anytime the team accumulates 10 points, they get an upgrade. So for Paul Pogba, for example, if Man United won three and drew one, that's 10 points, Pogba gets upgraded. Now, it doesn't matter if he gets an inform or not, because he could have been pivotal to those 10 points, but he still might have not done enough. Let's say he gets, you know, a goal and two assists in a game where Manchester United win 5-0, but Juan Mata scores three goals. Pogba's not getting the inform. Juan Mata's getting the inform. And so for me, although I, lo I, I genuinely love these cards, I love, the, I love live items, I, I, I like the card design, I think it's fantastic. I, I really like the players that they picked in general. I would have loved to have seen more players outside the major leagues. You know, we've got Ziyech and Lozano, and that was it. So I would have loved to have seen more players from outside the top five leagues. Um, but I, I enjoy the players that they picked. But I just feel like... Again, this is going to be a full team of players that we only see one here or there get an upgrade here or there. And for me, that's quite dead. Uh, for example, Usman Dembele, his inform, um, he, his inform is from Team of the Week 13. So that's seven weeks ago since he got... And that was only his first ever upgrade. So Usman Dembele has got one inform so far, tall in the whole game. And this is a card that we're going to think is going to get multiple upgrades now because he's got a live item. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so for me personally, uh, I just that, that that's my opinion on on this aspect. I don't think that um, I don't think that you know these players are going to be all that blown out of proportion. You know, you, you got to rely on them specifically to perform well. And then even if they perform well, you've got to hope that they were the only player that performed well in their team. Um, and we go from there. So, uh, yeah, that, that's my opinion. James says, with only one goalkeeper in the 19-man squad, do you think there will be another one as an SBC? Maybe someone like Ben Foster already had two informs and just beat record for most saves in Prem. Yeah, I, I would love, I would genuinely love to see more goalkeeper SBCs. I think so far, Ika Casillas might well be the only goalkeeper SBC we've had this year. There's a massive lack of not only defenders, but defensive-minded midfielders by way of SBCs as well. So it would be amazing if EA could um, give us a little more from the defensive and goalkeeper area. And yeah, you know, a nice big, what would it be, like an 86 or an 87 Ben Foster? Could be quite good. By the way, you guys, you see that there? Look at that. I tried to clear it with Juan Fran straight away off that goal kick. <sighs> that game was a triggering game for me. Um, Crude Dog Gaming says, anyone else feel these YouTubers talking about the new metas is ruining the game? Tomorrow in Champs is going to be filled with finesse low drivens. The, the thing is, though, Crude Dog, Dog right, is that it, it's just a vicious cycle and, and the people that play the game have to take responsibility for wanting to know the info. 
YouTubers wouldn't make videos explaining what the best ways to score are if they weren't craved so much by people who were struggling to score. Everybody wants to know how to play better and how to be better. So they go onto YouTube, they find the content creators that provide that content, they watch it, they learn from it, and they go from there. That, like, no content creator is going to be like, oh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people want to know how to do what I'm doing. Not going to put that out as a video. Don't want to ruin the game. Like, we, we don't owe... We don't owe it to anyone in any way to be the gatekeeper of what works or what doesn't work in the game. That is on EA's shoulders to balance this game more often than they do. It has been, what are we now? We're in February. So we've had all of October, all of November, all of December, all of January, half of uh, September and a little bit of February. We've had four and a half months of FIFA 19 and they have only just fixed the balancing of finesse shots. That is not okay. If they did that a month into the game, then we're like, oh, wow, AI's really, really strong. They could have then adjusted that. Oh, wow, crossing's really overpowered. They could adjust the accuracy of crosses or the jumping height of attackers or the reactions of goalkeepers to crosses. Oh, wow, now all of a sudden low-driven finesses are overpowered. Okay, so they can adjust the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the success rate of those. And they could have continually balanced the game. And they haven't. They, they've taken four and a half months to balance one thing. And now I'm hearing through the grapevine that there will be no more patches in this game. And, and, uh, or, or at the very least, maybe one more patch in this game because they're just working on FIFA 20 now. So this is what we're left with. So I, I don't think you can necessarily blame the content creators pro for, for providing the information that is craved by the viewers. The viewers have to take some responsibility for wanting to find the shortcuts. The content creators have to take some responsibility for creating the content. But ultimately, the buck stops with EA for creating the game that allows both narratives to be pushed. Um, that's my opinion on that one. Um, Osama says, Nep, in my opinion, the high price players from this promo is not worth. Uh, so looking at the prices of the players... Um, yeah, Werner the Burner at 750k, mad expensive. When we compare that to his inform, his 87 rated inform, his 87 rated inform is 300k. You're paying over double for a plus one upgrade for a card that might potentially get upgraded more in, in the rest of the game. I don't think that's valuable. Um, there's a few cards like that as well. But there are a few cards that I think are quite good value for money. That Pepe card coming in at 150k, sure, he's difficult to link. But he's only 150k. He has had a massive upgrades already. Three upgrades already. He could easily potentially get another one or two. Again, based on what I've said before, it does heavily relate, relate, you know, relate to whether or not um, he will be successful. And his card is quite decent. So another upgrade or two for him will make his card very, very good. The problem that I have again with this is, and in terms of like combining that with price, is that... Although we're only in February, we've still got probably a couple good more promos to come yet. I know we've got Foot Birthday, we're going to have the you know Lunar New Year. I'm sure EA are going to do a Ones to Watch promo still. I'm sure we'll get Ratings Refresh promo still. The fact that we've had the Headliners and the, um, and the uh, Future Stars promos, we'll probably get another couple of teams. We'll probably get a team like this every other week, you know, a team full of boosted cards. And I'm all for that. There's going to be a lot of promos along the way until Team of the Season. But ultimately, we are starting to gear towards thinking about Team of the Season more than ever before. We're into February now. Team of the Season will probably come in sometime around May, um, which means we've got February, March, April, three months, 12 weeks. So when you look at these players and, and the upgrades they could potentially get and the cost price of them right now, of course, you could sell them back on if you've got a tradable version and get some coins back. But to pay 740k for an 88-rated Werner, let's assume he doesn't get any upgrades all his price is going to do is continue to just drop, 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 drop. And then his team of the season is going to be like a 97 rated with 99 pace, 96 dribbling, 98 shooting, 88 passing, and 90 physical. And that card will only be about three, 400,000 coins because when team of the season comes, there are so many incredible choices of players that people just sell all their big cards because if you had a, if you had a Werner at 800k, Instead, you could go and buy three team of the seasons that are better than him to get into your team. You're just going to sell him. So what happens is the great market crash happens. And so, yeah, I, I think personally, some of these players are just far, far too expensive. Um, if they upgraded two team of the season versions, which again is something that I wish EA would do. Okay, keep, keep our team of the year. I'm down with that. Upgrade these cards to team of the season versions. That Lala, 400k right now, he's 87 rated. He's going to get like a 95 rated 
team of the season card, maybe a 96 rated team of the season card. If that headline is upgraded to plus one on the team of the season, I would be all for that. I would be like, yeah, 400k for that right now is banging because in 12 weeks' time, he's going to be an insane card no matter what and he might get a few more upgrades in the meantime. It's worth my coins. So I think because they don't upgrade to their best possible card during the game cycle, yeah, a few of them are a little bit expensive. I think EA missed a trick on that one personally. Uh, last comment um, is from Joe Chim. He says, I think this promo looks really nice. A lot of people on Footman are hating it, saying EA's milking three points while they still can. And, and the comment leads into a lot of that. And just to end off here, it's, it's like we asked for this from EA. We asked for more cards, more, more uh, content, just more to do in the game. Um, and and I, I like this stuff. I think this helps the game. I think this keeps the game cycle active and, and keeps it relevant. And then when EA give it to us, people are like, oh, they're money whores. They just want our FIFA points. We can't have it. We can't ask for content and then be like, oh, my God, they're giving us content. They just want money. We can't have it both ways. But anyway, guys, this is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.